ABC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. A woman from northern Maine is facing murder charges following a fire that killed a man in Caribou. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. A Lincolnville man charged with murder was arraigned yesterday. And emotions ran high at the State House yesterday as people testified about COVID vaccine mandates and exemptions. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey, Susan, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Here we go. The last of a small craft advisory was just trimmed back at the noon time frame, so we're looking pretty good, at least at this point, though, as the winds and the wave high will start to relax for a little while yet. We're going to be watching for clouds moving in today, maybe some rain if you're traveling to the south and west, so kind of a dreary day, dreary day in general for us, but overall, it will be rather quiet moving forward. We do have some more precipitation off toward the west. So we'll have our turn, especially tomorrow, for more active weather moving in. An icy mess that will be on the way very soon, and we'll need to pay attention to that closely. So decreasing clouds later this evening, but more clouds on the way again to start things off for your Wednesday with the active weather arriving even as early as Wednesday morning. So the winds won't be too bad so far, mainly out of the uh, kind of switching directions in general at around 5 to 10 miles per hour, but by tomorrow increasing around 10 to 15 miles per hour, maybe in a few areas. So your forecast for today, mid-50s. That will feel nice, right, with a mostly cloudy sky and that west breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll lose some of the clouds tonight, mid-20s with a partly cloudy sky and that north wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 30s, rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow on the way. Northeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll need to watch that ice accumulations closely. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. Mostly cloudy skies, temperatures in the 50s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. We have breaking news this noon. Crews are on the scene of a multi-alarm building fire in Dover Foxcroft. The call came in around 1030 for a fire at 9 Cherry Street in Dover Foxcroft. On arrival, there was fire showing from the top floor of a two-story apartment building. Mutual aid has been called in to help fight that blaze. We have a crew at the scene and we'll have much more tonight at 6. A woman from northern Maine is facing murder charges following a fire that killed a man in Caribou. Authorities say 43-year-old Susan Chokanowski was, uh, set the fire that destroyed an apartment building on Water Street on January 26. The body of 30-year-old Jason Donahue was found in the rubble. Officials say Chokanowski had been living in the building at the same time. According to the Portland Press-Herald, she's now being held without bail and is charged with murder and arson. A former Holton resident is expected to plead guilty to manslaughter this week. Leanne Daigle was arrested in Massachusetts in June for a baby that was found abandoned in a gravel pit more than 35 years ago. A neighbor's dog discovered the child in Frenchville in 1985 and carried it back home. Authorities determined the baby had been abandoned in sub-zero weather, but it took decades before they had enough evidence to make an arrest. Daigle was originally charged with murder, but is expected to plead guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter. She'll appear in Holton courtroom on Thursday. A Lincolnville man charged with murder says he's not guilty. 47-year-old Matthew Pendleton was arraigned Monday at Waldo County Courthouse in Belfast. Pendleton is charged with murder in the death of 47-year-old Kevin Currett on January 5th. Just after 9.30 a.m., Waldo County Sheriff's deputies were called to 54 Thorndike Road in Lincolnville for an unresponsive man. When they arrived, they found Currett dead at the scene. No date for a bail hearing has been set. Ellsworth police report multiple drug busts in recent days and are asking for your help in tracking suspicious activity. According to the Ellsworth Police Department's Facebook page, on March 29th, during a traffic stop on the Bangor Road, officers located just under 80 grams of cocaine and almost $8,500 in cash. Jeffrey Card of Ellsworth was charged with trafficking of scheduled drugs. And on April 2nd, while investigating a trespassing complaint at a local motel, officers found roughly 76 grams of fentanyl and more than 12 grams of cocaine. Sean Silsby of Ellsworth was charged with aggravated trafficking of a scheduled drug and unlawful possession of a scheduled drug. Silsby was also arrested on an outstanding warrant for failing to appear on a charge of theft out of Penobscot County. Ellsworth police would like your help. If you have any information about the ongoing sale of drugs in Ellsworth, you can contact the tip line at 669-6699 and remain anonymous. 
Just a couple of weeks ago, the state of Maine said a final goodbye to Holden Police Chief Chris Greeley. Now one of the officers he mentored is stepping up to fill Greeley's role and plans to continue the work he started. Our Devin Dagnold has the story. So my name is Eduardo. I'm the new uh, chief of police for the Holden Police Department. On Tuesday, March 28th, the town of Holden swore in their newest police chief, Eduardo Benjamin. I had a chance to sit down with him to discuss his upbringing, his time working with Chief Greeley, and what he sees for the future of the department. What do you want your legacy to be? Of course, I have big shoes to fill, no, but uh, I'm going to create my own path. According to Benjamin, he doesn't see any big changes for the department in his first year. And after that, who knows what obstacles they might face, but he will be ready for any new challenges as police chief. He says right now his biggest challenge is maintaining the environment that makes Holden Police and the town they serve special. And we're very unique, like, you know, when somebody, someone call here, you know, I pick up the phone. And, like, I used to tease chief, I was like, it might be the only department in the state that, you know, somebody called the police department and the chief answered the phone. Originally from Brazil, Benjamin immigrated to Maine in the early 2000s and became a police officer in 2010, after Chris Greeley allegedly cornered him in his own gym with an application. Benjamin credits his philosophy of community service to his mentor and predecessor, the late Chief Chris Greeley. Chief Greeley, or Chris Greeley, he was like, a, he was a mentor, uh, he was a friend, and he was like a father figure to me. So. I was lucky enough to work by his side for almost eight years, and I can say that I learned from the best. All in all, Benjamin says he is excited for his new position and the opportunities and challenges it brings with it. In Holden, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Maine State Police are remembering Detective Benjamin Campbell four years after his death. Detective Campbell was killed in the line of duty on April 3, 2019. He had stopped to help a motorist whose vehicle had become disabled on the side of I-95 South in Hamden during a snowstorm when a tire came off a passing truck and struck him. The freak accident in Campbell's death stunned Mainers and ultimately resulted in a $15,000 fine and traffic violations for the driver of the truck. Monday, Maine State Police remembered him with a post on their Facebook page. Detective Campbell joined the state police in 2000. 2012, he survived by his wife and son. On Medical Freedom Day, Maynard spoke out both for and against bills that touched on multiple levels of the debate surrounding vaccines, including the COVID-19 vaccine. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. Motions ran high for those testifying in front of the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee on whether a vaccine mandate should be implemented. What is the intent behind mandating a vaccine that is known to be killing and injuring people? It certainly appears that the intent is to harm or to kill. This is essentially legislating murder. The bills touched on multiple areas of the vaccine debate and mandate controversy. One would restore religious and philosophical exemptions for immunization requirements. Conversely, another bill sought to implement a mandate for school children to receive the COVID-19 vaccine or any vaccine covered under emergency use authorization. Other bills discussed included one to prohibit mandates for students enrolled in public schools, and as well as another proposed law that would ban vaccine requirements under emergency use authorization as a condition for admission or attendance of higher educational institutions. House Republican leader Billy Bob Falkingham was among those who testified. He says the state has to do better in including those who have not received their COVID vaccines. The state of Maine has a constitutional requirement to provide public education for all students, and right now that education is not being provided to those students. Others argued everyone needs to be vaccinated in order to create a safe environment. Our children deserve to be safe in their schools, and one of the ways to keep them safe is to help prevent uh, disease. Primary prevention is a goal in our uh, line of work, and what we are trying to do is, is allow children to attend school free of preventable disease. Victoria Bucklin, who testified in front of the Educational and Cultural Committee, says she is against vaccines in general and believes vaccine makers have ulterior motives. I think our government and our pharmaceutical uh, companies are not uh, working in our best interest, and we need to be aware of that. Bills will continue to be discussed and worked on before receiving a vote from the committee. Augusta, Matthew Jaroncic, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
Local children will soon be able to watch a free movie at the Center Theater in Dover Foxcroft. Northern Light Mayo Hospital announced it's sponsoring a free movie night to provide children and families with a fun activity during the upcoming spring vacation. They'll be showing Space Jam, a new legacy featuring basketball great LeBron James and the Looney Tunes crew. It will take place on Tuesday, April 18th at 5.30 and admission will be first come first served. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, Maine lawmakers are taking up bills on gun control. We've got details when we return. Come see us at r &K Variety in Hamden. r &K Variety is more than just a convenience store. With delicious homemade food made fresh daily, we offer hearty meals that don't break the bank. Whether it be our delicious chicken pot pie, our famous lasagna, or one of our savory soups, you can't go wrong at r &K Variety. Looking for a drink after work? R&K Variety is an agency liquor store with an impressive selection. R&K Variety, more than just a convenience store. We're your neighbor, chef, barista, and friend. Stop by today. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Have both Medicare and Medicaid? Now's the time to explore your options and choose the coverage that's right for you. Choose a plan that offers you more benefits at no additional cost. Millions of members turn to WellCare for benefits and services that go beyond basic Medicare and help them lead better, healthier lives. Choose a plan with zero or low monthly premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. And with WellCare, you don't just pay less, you get more. More dental with comprehensive coverage, including dentures and crowns. More vision and hearing with an eyewear allowance and hearing aids. Plus prescription drug coverage with $0 preferred generics and free home delivery. Call us at 1-877-267-8416 to speak to a friendly licensed representative and request a free all-in-one guide. There's no obligation. We're here to help you review your options to see if a WellCare plan is the right decision for you. WellCare has a large network of quality doctors and specialists. Plus, we offer PPOD SNPs with the freedom and flexibility to choose your preferred provider in some areas. Enjoy free over-the-counter health care items and free groceries with a healthy food card. Plus, free transportation to doctors and pharmacies and free meals delivered to your home. Get convenient access to care with our telehealth services, including online doctor visits and a free gym membership with online classes. WellCare is a leader in government-sponsored health care. It has been serving those with Medicare, Medicaid, and prescription drug for more than 35 years. Call now. We're here to answer your questions and even assist in rolling you over the phone. Choose the company that puts your health first. WellCare. Medicare done well. Call now and get a free copy of our all-in-one guide, 1-877-267-8416. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. As the nation debates gun control in the wake of the mass shooting in Nashville, Maine lawmakers are taking up the issue, too. A number of measures were introduced Monday in Augusta. Mal Meyer was at the State House with what the bills would do and re reaction from both sides. She was only 25. Judy Richardson's daughter, Darian, was shot during a Portland home invasion in 2010. She died less than two months later. Our daughter's homicide investigation is, is just stalled. According to Richardson, and as CBS 13 has reported, the original owner sold the gun without a background check, legally under the law. He was at a gun show. He said he doesn't even remember what day he sold it, doesn't know who he sold it to. She's not sure if the buyer would have passed a background check, but at least there would have been a record. That's one of the reasons why Richardson, who owns a gun, is supporting a bill to close the so-called gun show loophole. The bad guys... They don't do background checks, pure and simple. The proposal, along with three others, is getting a lot of attention from gun rights advocates. Thank you for coming out today to defend your Second Amendment right. Other bills facing pushback would require a 72-hour waiting period after a sale, increase penalties for possession by prohibited people, or make it a crime to give prohibited people a firearm. Is there any middle ground that you'd be willing to settle on? The position of gun owners in Maine is that any time that you seek to curb criminal activity by infringing on the rights of law-abiding citizens is not a good thing for the Second Amendment and it's not a good thing for the Constitution. The groups argue the measures wouldn't reduce crime in Maine. But for moms like Judy Richardson, 
it's worth a try. Do laws stop everything? No. But we, we, can, we improve when we can. Also at the State House, the Judiciary Committee heard testimony on a bill that would reduce the number of associate justices on the main Supreme Judicial Court in order to add judges to the Superior and District Courts of Maine. LD 1192 was presented by Senator Rick Bennett of Oxford. The bill would reduce the number of associate justices on the Supreme Court from six to four. It would then add a justice to the Superior Court and a judge to the District Court. While there is opposition to the reduction on the associate justices, there was some agreement on the need in the lower courts. We just think that the right way to get there is not to reduce the number of justices on the main law court. For example, we have seven justices now. If one or two of them need to recuse themselves, that leaves fewer justices to be able to make important decisions. Maine is a very small state. The bill was inspired by a reported backlog of cases due to an insufficient number of judges and, in some cases, the need for more public defenders. The Penobscot County Commissioners have hired a Patriot Consulting to act as a lobbyist on behalf of the county at the State House in Augusta. Owner of Patriot Consulting, Zach Zingley, told us that the goals that have been set are to push for more funding for the county for a new jail and additional deputies. Zingley says the need for more deputies is in part to cut down on response time during emergencies. He says Penobscot County is unlike any other county in Maine, just based on mileage along Interstate 95. Many counties across Maine have been trying to address the need for more personnel as state police restructure patrols and funding shared with counties in rural Maine. Maine. A couple from Maluncus is putting the Pine Tree Trail back on the main state map. The duo uncovered an old metal Pine Tree Trail sign on their property, and once they researched what it was all about, they made it their joint mission to reintroduce the public to this forgotten trail. Our Jody Hersey has more. Back in 2012, Nate Nipula uncovered a piece of Maine history while working on his property in Maluncus. It was an old pine tree trail sign. You just never know what you're going to stumble across. I mean, it might take you years before you realize what it is. Between 2012 and 2019, I had the sign in my closet, even hanging out here on the old barn for a while. Then in 2019, I came up with the idea to, to bring back the recognition of the route. The Pine Tree Trail, which spans from Portland to Fort Kent, originally used to display 500 signs along the route. It had been labeled on Maine maps and other tourism literature, but somehow became forgotten over the years. Robbie McKay is Nipula's fiance. The potential of what it can do to help all these communities that are struggling, there was really only one answer, and that was to revive it. The couple reached out to the Maine DOT, which informed them it could cost over $100,000 to re-sign the entire route. So the duo opted to have just 135 signs remade at $300 each, which covers the cost of the sign, the hardware, and the installation. White Sign in Stillwater created the new trail signs, which are now going up along the route. It's not really different than most signs. The only difference is it has the logo. Nipula and McKay are using their own money earned from Nipula's wooded moose creations to pay for the signs along with contributions from donors that the couple is referring to fondly as trailblazers. We had someone from South Carolina get in touch with us and say that they want to travel the trail this year. Could we give them some information? You know, bicyclists, they're all excited to bicycle the trail and, and it's just phenomenal. The possibilities are endless. In Maluncus, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, the state of Maine got some help to save vulnerable species. We'll take a look. We'll be right back. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take one daily Jardians at each day start. As time went on. Guardians works 24-7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Guardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death too. 
Jardians may cause serious side effects including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis. Taking Jardians with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians is a really swell the little pill with the big story to tell. Right now, Planet Fitness, you can get that big fitness energy for just $1 down, $10 a month. No commitment, cancel any time. It's a great deal, and our 17 million members agree. You can say that again. Okay, as I said, you can join for just $1 down, $10 a month. What a deal! So turn your low energy into big fitness energy and enjoy tons of equipment in a clean and spacious judgment-free zone to get that post-workout glow. So get going, or shall I say glowing? <laughs> join for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, April 5th. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ present the latest in photo booth technology, the Magic Mirror Air Booth. We offer unlimited prints of beautiful 4x6 full-color photos and unlimited photos sent directly to your phone. The new Magic Mirror Air Booth is available for proms, weddings, birthdays, class reunions, and corporate events with one of the largest selection of props available. You can book the Magic Mirror Air Booth and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deal. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. Hey, May. How are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves. But to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. So we're out here asking and encouraging you to ask the people in your life, starting with yourself. So ask away. Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. His new research highlighting the overwhelming majority of adolescents starting gender-affirming hormone therapy continue into adulthood. With more, here's ABC's Sherry Preston. A new finding that 98% of those who started puberty blockers in their teens continued with gender-affirming therapy as adults. The study was done in the Netherlands, where puberty suppression is available to transgender adolescents under the age of 18. Gender-affirming hormone therapy is also available to young people who go on to transition. Of those in the study, 31% were assigned male and 69% were assigned female at birth. The legality and availability of such care in the U.S. varies greatly state by state. But researchers point out that these results are reassuring to address public concerns regarding regret of transitioning. With this Medical Minute, I'm Sherry Preston, ABC News. Maine's Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife is getting more than $500,000 to preserve and protect vulnerable species and habitats. They will use the federal funding to build on the department's current projects. Those include the conservation of butterfly, flower fly, and bumblebee populations. It also includes improving the availability of nesting habitats for endangered freshwater turtles. In a statement, Senators Angus King and Susan Collins said, quote, Maine's wildlife carries immense cultural and economic significance to our state, and it is crucial that we do everything we can to protect our threatened and endangered species before it's too late. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Tomorrow morning on Star 97.7, Paul Dupuis has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 97.7 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 97.7. Your best defense against erosion and cavities is strong enamel. Nothing beats it. New Pro Enamel Active Shield actively shields the enamel to defend against erosion and cavities. I think that this product is a game changer for my patients. It really works. the countertop. I sent it out to the granite shop this morning to be replaced.
Wow. The quickest turnaround in the business. The Granite Shop in Sedgwick. This is Ergo. They automatically enhance your hearing wherever you are. Ours comes with buttons on the back, so you can fiddle around to your heart's content. Like the 80s all over again. Cool, right? For a limited time, get $300 off our latest device. Tomorrow morning on Star 977. Paul Dupuis has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 977 local news. And Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 977. Welcome back. NASA announced on Monday the four astronauts who will be part of the Artemis II mission to the moon, a mission that's been in the planning stages since 2019. Main Zone astronaut Jessica Meir had been put on the short list for the Artemis II mission back in 2020. However, it appears she was not chosen for the mission. Commander Reed Weissman, pilot Victor Glover, mission specialist Christina Koch, and Canadian mission specialist Jeremy Hansen were chosen for the 10-day mission that will have them doing lunar flyby and orbiting the moon aboard the Orion spacecraft. Artemis II is set to take off in November of 2024. I love looking at the stars at night. I don't know about going up there. Let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, here we go. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Paramount Paving. When it comes to paving, they are Paramount. Give them a call for a free estimate today. Here we go. Small craft advisory was trimmed at around noon today, so that means we are done with this advisory, so that means it's getting out of here. With wave heights are starting to relax just a bit. Some areas still around three to six foot wave heights. We're going to start seeing things relax for a little while yet before we have to watch for our next system that will begin to move in. For now, we're quiet today with the most economy sky. You have to look further down to the south, whether that's over the ocean or even in southwestern Maine for some. Uh, rainfall that will be moving in today, but for us, we'll be looking okay. We have to zoom things out to look for more of the active weather with this area of low pressure right about in here that's going to be tracking off towards the east into the north and east. And along that system, though, that'll give us the opportunity for a little bit of icy mess, uh, icy precipitation moving in, and of course some other precipitation types as well. Let's break this down with Futurecast. So decreasing clouds for today, so by tonight will become partly cloudy, but tomorrow they'll look what happens: increasing clouds. Watching for our next active mess that will be moving in as early as around nine to ten o'clock in the morning. So as we watch for that, that will begin to move in. A lot of ice, wintry mix possible, so we'll need to be careful with this as we head towards Wednesday morning, lasting through the evening as well. Some snow to the north briefly, but that starts to clear up for a bit by Thursday morning, so a little bit of a break. The normal rain moving in as the cold front passes through as we head towards Thursday evening. And then by Friday morning, looking better though, this a little bit cooler though with that gusty north breeze that will be passing through right after the cold front moves through as well. So as for snowfall, nothing too extreme, maybe an inch or two in some areas before we're all finished up. Further off towards the north, that's before we transition to more of that icy mess as well. In some areas, though, could be talking two to maybe three tenths of an inch of ice. So as this all develops, so we're going to be very careful with this. So if you're traveling further off towards the north, it will get rather messy. So definitely be careful with that before we transition to all rain. And if you don't want to cross a good part of the Midwestern country and even further down toward the south, they will need to be careful, though. Chances for strong and severe thunderstorms possible, especially over in the red shaded areas. Some tornadoes can be ruled out either. So some rather stronger ones. So again, if you know anyone in these areas, give them a call. Make sure they're paying attention to the weather today. All right, mid-50s today, mostly cloudy. West wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, here we go. Mid-20s, party cloudy. We lose some cloud cover. North wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 30s. Rain, freezing, rain, sleet, and snow possible. We'll have to watch that ice accumulation closely. With the northeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Paramount paving, extended forecast. Our wintry mix will switch over to all rain on Thursday with highs in the mid 50s and then mostly cloudy on good friday highs in the mid 40s and lots of sunshine on saturday highs in the low 40s freezing rain snow rain plain rain i like all the different rain categories only in maine that's all for abc 7 news at noon thanks for watching i'm susan farley we'll see you this evening with peter dubois and beth jones on abc 7 news at six have a great afternoon